So in the last section, we derived the pressures using the ideal gas approximation. And also I mentioned we need to consider the quantum effect when the stars has a really high density. As a quantum effect, I explained uncertainty principles proposed by the Heisenberg. We cannot determine the position and the momentum both precisely. So we have explained delta x times delta p have to be the larger than the h bar cube of these numbers it becomes a delta v so, so delta v times the delta p cube have to be the larger than the h cube this is the uncertainty principle so if we compress the materials really the high density state of the gas we consider so this means delta v is decreasing volume is decreasing so to satisfy the uncertainty principles so to satisfy this equation so delta v is going to decrease then delta p have to move up the particles start to move faster and faster new velocity of the particles produce the pressures we call the such a pressure is a degeneracy pressures so when we consider the materials in the really high densities we have to consider the quantum effect. By considering the quantum effect, we derive the new type of the pressures, degeneracy pressures. To understand the degeneracy pressures, Pauli's exclusion principle is also very useful to understand the degeneracy pressures. Pauli exclusion principle said no two electrons can occupy the same quantum state, including spins. So in this situation, these two electrons have the same energy state and also the spin state is the same. Then this is not allowed. If we want to try to put the three electrons in this situation, one of the electrons have to transit into the higher energy state. So electron is forced into the higher energy state. So even in the zero temperatures energy state of the electron cannot come to the lowest energy state electron have to move up to the higher energy state this is result from the Pauli's exclusion principles okay, by considering the Pauli exclusion principles we'd like to find out the largest momentum of our electrons so we'd like to consider distribution functions. In the case of the complete degeneracy, uncertainty principle is expressed delta V and delta P cube is equal to the H cube. In the isotropic situation, delta P cube is equal to 4 pi P squared delta P. If you consider the P x, P sub x, P sub y, P sub G. This corresponds to the, this is P. You can consider the spheres. Area of the sphere is expressed 4 pi P squares. And the width of the shell is a DP. So volume of this shell can be expressed 4 pi P square times the delta P, DP. This is the volume. It corresponds to the delta P cube. So this is equal to the H cube. So distribution functions. So if you multiply the NP, DP, DV could have a two electrons because electron can have a spin up, down spin at the same time. So from the, this equation, we could find that the distribution function of the momentum is expressed NP dp equal 2 over dv using the uncertainty principles dv equal h cube over 4 pi p squares dp you can substitute it here then you have a number density is expressed this equation then from the, this equation we would like to find out the largest momentum so 
this largest momentum is expressed as p sub 0. Okay, so we'd like to find the relation between the number density of electrons with the largest momentum. So if you can substitute this NP is here. They integrate. This integration is very simple because of just p squares. It becomes p cubes. So p cubes. So we have a relation between the number density of electrons with the largest momentum. So largest momentum p sub zero increases with increasing number density of electrons. To find the degeneracy pressures, we use the same equation for the pressures. Pressure is expressed 1 over 3, integration from the 0 to the infinities, V, P, N, P, D, P's. So for the N, P, D, P's, in the case of the ideal gas approximation, we use a Maxwell distribution. In the case of the degeneracy pressures, we need to substitute this N, P, D, P. And for the V, you can substitute mv equal p. So b equal p over m. You can substitute. It becomes p square over m. So this part mp dp. Also, this integral is very easy to perform. It becomes p 8 pi over 15 mh cube p sub 0 to the fifth p sub 0 is a function of the number density of the electrons. This equation substitute. You will get the degeneracy pressure is a function of the number density of the electrons. And the number density of the electrons is expressed. N sub e is going to be low density mu sub e mh. Then pressures. is expressed 3 over pi 2 over 3 h squares over 20 me electron mass 1 over m sub h atomic mass unit 5 over 3 rho over mu sub e 5 over 3 so we choose that this part is a k sub 1. And then we have this equation. We only consider the degeneracy pressure of the electrons. Why? We don't have to consider the degeneracy pressure due to the ions. Because the degeneracy pressure is a function of the m. You can substitute the mass of the electron and the mass of the ions. But the mass of the electron is much, much smaller than the mass of the ions. The mass of the ion about 2,000 times larger than the mass of the electrons. So we don't have to take into account the contribution from the degeneracy pressure due to ion. When we say the degeneracy pressures, always we talk about the degeneracy pressure of the electrons. So we add the E here. Then, relativistic degeneracy pressures. If the electron density increases further and further, the P sub 0 becomes larger, the momentum becomes larger and larger. Then, if you take a ratio, the P sub 0 over M sub E. So, P sub 0 is equal to the momentum. In the case of the classical momentum, is a MV. So, P is expressed p sub 0 over m. But this is not correct form. When we consider special relativity, momentum is expressed mv over square root 1 minus b over c squares. But in this session, we'd like to make a more simple calculation. So when the p sub 0 over m sub e approaches the speed of light, then we have to take into account the relativistic effect. So relativistic degeneracy pressures we'd like to consider. When we calculate the degeneracy pressures, so this B, in the realities, you have to substitute this equation. But calculation becomes a little bit complicated. So instead of such a complicated calculation, we'd like to simplify the calculation. Just substitute B equals C into the, this 
equation. Then we could easily perform the integrals. Then answer it becomes a this one. n sub e is the law over mu sub e m sub h. Then pressures is expressed 3 over pi 1 over 3 hc over 8 1 over m sub h 4 over 3 then the low over mu sub e 4 over 3 so this part we choose k sub 2 the, this is a relativistic degeneracy pressure degeneracy pressures with a relativistic effect then degeneracy pressures is a function of the densities if we increase the densities degeneracy pressure is changing so actually the degeneracy pressures this one has a slope of the 5 over 3s and then relativistic degeneracy pressure the slope of, slope is a shallow slope 4 over 3s so these two lines cross. So when the density is lower than some critical point, you need to consider degeneracy pressures because the density is not so high enough to take into account the relativistic effect. But once the density becomes higher and higher and cross the some critical densities, you have to switch from the regular degeneracy pressure to the relativistic degeneracy pressures because the speed of the electron is approaching the speed of light. So we have to change the degeneracy, normal degeneracy pressure to the relativistic degeneracy pressures. This also important point is the degeneracy pressures is only function of the density, is independent of the temperatures. Okay, this is the end of this session.